Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you, Min uh, Minister O'Sullivan, for uh, taking this adjournment debate this afternoon. Um, the case that I refer to is a particular individual um, who suffered uh, a, a, an accident uh, several years ago, resulting um, in the last couple of years of having a battery pack uh, inserted into her back to stimulate the nerve endings. Um, she suffers great pain, chronic pain all the time, which is consistently deteriorating. Um, she, she has now got reached the stage where she can't get upstairs. She's a single mother with two children. Um, uh, she can't get up the stairs and uh, is, is seriously a prisoner in her own home. Um, so I, I, this, this uh, lady, I, I give my full support to her and she also has the full support of her medical teams for this housing transfer. I think it's absolutely imperative that something is done for her. I've been making representations to the County Council on her behalf for over seven months, always receiving the same reply that they will look into it or that there is no funding, that they don't have the funding. They have agreed an occupational therapist has been out and they have agreed that yes, she needs to go on the medical transfer list that it is and they absolutely acknowledge that it is there, but they say they don't have the money, they don't have a bungalow, they don't have the house to, to move her to. Um, I've seen the lady deteriorate and her condition deteriorate rapidly over the last couple of months, culminating uh, in the fact that today, Minister, she is currently in hospital in Dublin. Uh, where the battery pack has given up and she is now having it removed today, uh, surgery, probably six, seven hour surgery to have it removed today. When it's removed, it means that she will have no uh, um, nerve endings, that, so she won't, literally will not be able to move. She doesn't have the power in her legs anymore to move. So when that lady goes back home, um, she is even more debilitated. I, I just absolutely dread. She has two young sons, one who's still in national school and one who's in um, halfway through secondary school, who she relies on along with her, her, her family members to help to lift her if she does need to, to um, go to the bathroom or go to the shower. She spends an awful lot of her day just lying on a couch. And I, I just feel that this really, really is an urgent case. Um, this individual, as I said, is suffering every single day as a result of her accommodation that is wholly unsuited to her needs. And from what I've, I've been told, a lack of appropriate accommodation in which the person and her family can be transferred to. And this lady has said to me, I will go anywhere. I will literally move anywhere if I can have uh, a home where I can access and be as independent as I possibly can. Um, I refer to a short excerpt from the consultant's most recent letter to Louth County Council and I quote, this, lady, this individual needs a change of accommodation and needs to be accommodated in a bungalow accommodation. That is single storey accommodation as this individual has significant distress climbing stairs and a significant distress mobilising and walking on anything other than the flat. This person continues to have severe chronic pain on a daily basis and without this change in living accommodation is likely to become more and more se severely disabled. Minister, this is direct recommendation from a consultant anaesthetist and pain specialist in a hospital in Dublin. By not providing this individual with appropriate bungalow accommodation and not making her a priority case, the person's physical condition will continue to rapidly deteriorate. Every single week I receive phone calls from her actually crying on the phone in pain. I feel so helpless and I'm really at my wit's end kind of saying every single week I'll ring again and I do ring the council and I am sure that they are doing what they can do but at this stage minister to tell her sorry hold on hold on I've been telling her that for the last eight months. Um, it's also taking a significant toll on the family emotionally. Imagine being a prisoner in your own home and dreading having to go near the stairs. This is an unhealthy situation, not only for this person, but for her two young children in the household. And I think an unnecessary strain to put on two small boys. Over the past seven months, I've been witness to the unnecessary stress and the hardship that has been caused to this lady and her family. I feel I must now raise the case on a national level as I have exhausted all the normal channels and avenues locally in seeking resolution to this matter. This person cannot wait any longer for a transfer and we need to have swift action on the matter.
I look forward to your response. And I do appreciate, Minister, the work that you are doing in the area. And I do appreciate the, you know, the announcements that have been, you know, made lately about, you know, houses that have been boarded up and helping people that are out there. But from what I can see, it just seems to be a shortage of a house on the flat. Um, uh, but it's, I mean, I have several cases, I have loads of cases that I could come to you and say these people are in need of housing and these people are in need of housing. But this lady is actually really at crisis point. So I would really appreciate your you, advice Moore. on the matter. Thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, well, could I thank Senator Moran for raising what is clearly uh, very difficult and, and a lady who is in great pain and great difficulty. But unfortunately, as Minister, I'm precluded by housing legislation from intervening in individual housing cases. And the, issues, the issue raised is therefore something that must be dealt with by the local authority in accordance with its allocation scheme. Now, I do take the point that, you know, in terms of my allocating funding generally, um, that, you know, th there is a national responsibility. But in the case of an individual allocation, um, that has to be done by the local authority. Under Section 63 of the Local Government Act of 1991, a local authority is subject to law independent in the performance of its functions. The law in relation to the allocation of local authority is Section 22 of the Housing Miscellaneous Provisions Act of 2009 and the associated regulations for which I, as Minister, have responsibility in accordance with the legislation. The elected council members set down council policy in relation to the allocation of local authority housing in its allocation scheme. This policy-making power extends to determining the order of pri priority in accordance with which dwellings are allocated by the authority and reserving a proportion of dwellings for allocation, amongst other things, to different classes of households. It is the job of the manager of the local authority to make allocations, including decisions on transfers for existing local authority tenants in accordance with the scheme. In this connection, I understand that the allocation scheme adopted by Dundalk Town Council provides that transfer applications will be considered in situations where a transfer would relieve a serious medical condition, which is clearly in this case, including physical or mental disability. It is also the case that Section 22 of the 2009 Act provides that the manager of a local authority may disregard the order of priority given to a household under an allocation scheme where the household is being provided with social housing support arising from specified exceptional circumstances, including exceptional medical or compassionate grounds. Section 22 of the 2009 Act empowers the Minister to direct a housing authority to change an allocation scheme and to issue directions to a housing authority regarding the operation of its allocation scheme. However, the enactment specifically provides that the latter power shall not be construed or operate to enable the Minister to direct the allocation of a dwelling to a, sp a specific household. In view of the legal position, as I have outlined it, uh, Senator Moran will appreciate that it would be inappropriate for me to comment on the facts of any particular request for a transfer to another local authority dwelling in order to avoid any suggestion that the Minister is intervening in the case. Um, having said that, I know that um, you've described uh, a really difficult situation. And, um, I mean, I did allocate funding last week, as you're probably aware, and, and one of the categories of that funding was people with a disability. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, it, it is clear that, unfortunately, the power to allocate is with the local authority. Um, but, um, you know, I, I really do hope that this issue will be Question. I, I could just, yeah. Um, I, I, and I appreciate and I, I was fully aware that you can't uh, comment on, on individual cases, Minister, but I think the problem is that, you know, what I've been told is we don't have bungalow accommodation. So what I would ask is, you know, can funding be made available to, to, to buy bungalow accom accommodation, you know, or to provide more. I've tried to get the figures on, um, you know, the number of houses that are, are out. And I know that that money that was allocated last week for, for disability has already been, you know, it's, 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 I understand, for intellectual disability as well, you know, a housing, a housing uh, aid units there. You know, but what I would ask is, you know, I, I'm sure that this lady is not the only one. So, uh, you know, I, you know, every time I, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to the county council on a weekly basis, um, asking, and I just keep getting the same answer. And I just would think that we're, you know, it's, in the long run, it's going to cost more money because this lady's health is, is, is going to, you know, her mental as well as her physical health, as well as that of her family. So I, I just think that. You know, nationally, there, there has to be, you know, I, I just feel I've come to a dead end. And I, w I really would, 
you know, support. I, I, I just don't know where to take it from here now. Uh. Well, I suppose just to say that whenever I can get my hands on money for housing, um, I allocate it as quickly as possible. And I ask the that. local authorities in all cases to prioritise whatever the, the heading is for the funding, that they send me their priorities uh, and, you know, that we allocate wherever we can, particularly where there are particular demands and, and large demands. Uh, so, I mean, as soon as I possibly have funding again, uh, Senator Moore, and I will be allocating in accordance with the requests that come up from, from the various local authorities. Um, but uh, unfortunately, as I say, I can't comment on the particular case.